Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 12, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. Well, yesterday a couple of listeners alerted me that the Rust vulnerability that I talked about is actually part of a bigger issue. There's a blog post by a researcher, I guess you would pronounce it, uh, Riotech, that talks about this problem. They are calling this vulnerability bad, bad, but essentially it affects many languages that are executing batch files on Windows. The problem here is that there is a create process API that's commonly being used in order to execute these files. But what happens behind the scenes is that the file name for the bat file, including any command line arguments, are being passed to command.exe. And that opens you to a host of OS command injection issues if you're not very carefully escaping any of the command line arguments. One issue that's in particular kind of tricky to track is that after you may do the escaping and after you then sent all that data, meaning the file name for the bad file and the command line arguments to command.exe, environment variables that may be present in the command line will be expanded. This is a particular issue since by default you have the special variable called command command line, which expands to double quotes. So an attacker could include percent command command line percent, which will then after you do all of your escaping, expand it to a double quote and as a result may again get you back into OS command injection territory. So Rust made a patch available. I just saw earlier a Node.js patch that looks like it fixes this issue, even though uh, this particular issue is not quite credited in the release that I've seen. There should also be soon a patch available for PHP. Other languages, like for example, uh, Python and Go, just updated their documentation. Haskell has a patch available. And then, for example, Java just won't fix the issue. Executing commands like this is always dangerous, should be avoided if possible. If you do have to do it, then take a look at the blog post by Riotac as it goes over a couple of different scenarios, how the vulnerability exactly happens, and then also how to escape things properly or at least more securely than what's usually done. This is a problem if you are executing bad files from your code on Windows and you are accepting user provided command line arguments. If you have fixed file names, if you're not on Windows, then of course that's less of an issue. Then we have yet one more vulnerability from Fortinet. Uh, this one affects the Forti client for Linux. It's a remote code execution vulnerability. And in order to exploit this vulnerability, a user would have to visit a malicious website. And Apple revised its documentation pertaining the alerts it's sending to users that may be the target of mercenary spyware. Apple calls mercenary spyware any kind of spyware that is likely being created at the request of governments, usually by companies like in the past, for example, NSO Group. So if Apple has reason to believe that a particular user is targeted by such spyware, it will notify this user and apparently already has in response to this notified users in 92 different countries. Journalists and uh, other uh, activists and such are often the target of uh, these uh, kind of spyware attacks and Apple directs victims to the digital security helpline, which is operated by a nonprofit uh, access now. And Checkmarks has a blog post uh, with details regarding some techniques attackers are using in order to make victims, in particular developers, more likely download code from malicious repositories in GitHub. These tricks evolve around gaming the search results in GitHub. For example, one way how 
many developers, and I've sometimes done that too, try to find currently sort of actively developed uh, repositories is when you're searching for a certain keyword to look for which repository was most recently updated. Well, in this particular case, the attacker has continuously made small commits uh, to the a repository sometimes uh, within a few minutes of each other in order to make sure that a particular repository is always showing up first if the developer searching for a particular code base is sorting by looking at the last updated repository first entering interesting trick and sort of a little bit uh Development on the simple typo squatting and uh, certainly something that I can see developers fall for. So let your developers know. And uh, as always, be careful if you are including various libraries and other code bases from repositories like GitHub. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.